Combat outpost Keating was a remote U.S. Army position in Afghanistan that attracted a Taliban attack nearly seven years ago. The medal one of its defenders earned that day still weighs heavily on its recipient, as David Martin now tells us. On his third combat tour, Sergeant Clint Romache, by his own description, a tiny cog nestled deep inside the American war machine, earned the Medal of Honor for his actions in Afghanistan. I, I grew up in a family of, of military service. Uh, my grandfather was... Now sporting a full beard, he tells audiences wearing the medal is a burden. These things aren't given out when something went right. A lot of stuff went wrong. Um, and, it, and it's a heavy weight at some times. Eight of his buddies were killed on the day in 2009 when he earned his medal defending an outpost in Afghanistan, which according to an army investigation had no tactical or strategic value. Now, seven years later, he's written a book about it. A saga whose characters are less heroic than one might wish, exceptionally ordinary men who were put to an extraordinary test. In a place called Combat Outpost Keating in a remote Afghan valley. In Romache's words, the most remote, precarious, and tactically screwed combat outpost in all of Afghanistan. But you never take the low ground. You always take the high ground. We're here doing this. This is, this is insane. This is what Keating looked like to the Taliban who were taking their own videos. When you went out on patrol up to the high ground, you saw what the Taliban was seeing of Keating. Yes. What did it look like from the enemy's point of view? At times it looked like fish in a barrel. As an army sergeant, the only thing Romache could control were the training of his men and their attitude. Distilled in the motto, it doesn't get better. That was the mentality. Yeah, this sucks, but we can't control it, we can't affect it. Starting long before Romache's platoon arrived, the Taliban routinely fired down on Keating from the heights. On average, we'd get hit, you know, three to four times a week. So what was the, uh, the purpose of those attacks? They were testing us to see what our battle plans were, how we would react, what our response times were. There were 52 American soldiers at the camp and six main fighting positions. The attack came at 5.59 in the morning of October 3rd, 2009. But it wasn't uncommon to get shot at at that time in the morning. Um, it was kind of like a wake-up call most mornings. But this morning was different, and it was all reported by the Taliban. The Taliban had opened up on the six main fighting positions, pinning them down so they could not return fire. Keating sent out its first call for help three minutes after the attack began. Fire coming from everywhere. We need something. Soldiers not pinned down had to pull back from the perimeter to a cluster of buildings at the center of camp, which they called the Alamo position. And the call had kind of came out that we we're still going to go to what we call the Alamo position. The Alamo position, that doesn't sound good. No. Uh, so what did you think when you got the order? I really didn't like that idea. To me, it f felt like we were giving up, that we were kind of waving the white flag and admitting defeat um, in that moment in time. When you pull back into the Alamo position, you must have had to leave a bunch of guys out there. Yep. All the guys on the perimeter. Yeah, we knew we were leaving, you know, nine guys isolated on their own, um, which is a gut-wrenching feeling to, to sit there and kind of have to call up another man and say, hey, you're going to have to hold on tight for a second. And we're hoping to get back to you, but this might be the last time we, we say anything across the radio. Romache came up with a desperate plan. Well, we can either sit here and and die in our last final positions, or we can go out in a blaze of glory. He turned to Lieutenant Andrew Bunderman, the officer in charge. Told him we need to take this bitch back. That was the mission? Yes. Short and to the point. But then you got to get men to follow you out there. Yes. It's always a scary thing about being a leader. Were you sure they were going to follow? That's all I could do is ask. What happened when you asked for volunteers? Had five guys stand up. Didn't ask, what are we volunteering for? Didn't ask any of that. They just stood up. Low on bullets, they first ran toward the front gate where their ammo dump was located. How close is the enemy? Um, closer than what I ever thought I'd, I'd see them. 
10, 15 feet away. The Taliban were inside the camp's perimeter, and the command center sent out this chilling message. Enemy in the wire. Enemy in the wire. One hour and 11 minutes into the attack, the first Apache helicopter gunships arrived overhead to find Keating in flames. Had they arrived five minutes later, Romache believes, Keating would have been overrun. I just watched these three guys just walk on in like my game was over. The, the fighting was already done. I mean, they just literally strolled on. They don't understand we're still here, we're still fighting. You know, they're a mistake. You're not going to just stroll in here like you own the place. Like you, you don't have a care in the world because we're about to make you care. The Apaches were followed by a B-1 bomber which leveled a village where much of the Taliban fire was coming from. How far was the, uh, the village from, from where you were? It was less than 200 meters from their closest building to our perimeter. And they were dropping what kind of weapons? 500 pounders to 2,000 pounders. It seems awfully close. <laughs> it was. Um, you know, danger close for a 2,000 pounder is 1,000 meters. We would rather take our chances with our own bombs than, than be shot by the enemy. Finally, this message went out. Keating reports negative contact with the enemy. But seven Americans lay dead and one, Stefan Mace, the platoon cut up, was gravely wounded. We finally had that medevac coming in. And Mace was bagged up and ready to be put on it, still conscious. We all thought he was going to make it. I mean, that was, a, that was such a high moment with uh, everything that had happened. The Mace was going to make it. Sounds like, at the end, the battle came down to saving Private Mace. That's, that's what we were all hoping for. So what happened? They attempted to do surgery on him, but... It was just too late. You know, I think those medics did a whole lot for Mace, but I think it was Mace that held on to life for as long as he did until he left. Once he left his brothers, he knew he could go home. This battle was in 2009, right? Yes. So we're going on seven years. Oh, yeah. Still with you, isn't it? I hope it never leaves. Three years after the battle, Romache was awarded the Medal of Honor, which struck him as both inappropriate and wrong. It boils down to why me? I didn't do anything special. Just did a job, like... 52 other guys there were doing that day and eight that did way more than I ever was asked of. I mean, why me? Because you were the one that led the counterattack. I think you could have replaced me with any other red-blooded American soldier. There would have been another one that would have stepped up and done the same thing. After the battle, all the soldiers were ordered to abandon Keating, and the outpost they had fought so desperately to defend was leveled by American bombs.